Welcome everybody, and welcome as usual to the American Apocalypse tank of Armored Warfare. Post nerf. So, we all know what happened with the Cat B. It kind of killed everything. So, let's have a brief look. Let's have a brief look down of its stats. The Cat B is armed with a fast draw 140mm gun. There is a 0.5 seconds delay between the shells, which means that most of the time this will function as a double shot. However, the shells can be quite inaccurate at 0.114 minimum spread and that will go up after you fire, meaning that this tank is very much a BL-10. It's not exactly the most accurate gun in the world to begin with and of course the spread after immediately firing a second shot means that in all but the most point blank range of cases, the best thing to do is to just simply wait a second or two then fire again. This is not like the XM103's fast draw where you can fire both shells immediately because the XM1A3 has a 120, this has a 140. So during the nerf, um, the accuracy was changed. The engine was changed from being an Altaze engine to a actual XM1, to an actual Cat B engine, and the armor was nerfed as well. However, the playstyle for the Cat B remains the same. You have a lot of hit points. The tank is still very well armored just not as much as it used to be and that 140mm fast draw is definitely very good. However, it was changed by 2 seconds, meaning that the maximum reload time has now gone up from 15 seconds to 17 seconds. This is with Vincent, obviously with Douglas, Rachel and other commanders you can get it going quite a bit as well, but that happens. Um, so the main difference is are going to be the armor of course. Now what happened to the armor? Now the armor plate was changed from around 874 to 840 and the lower plate was changed from around 800 to 640 as well meaning the tier 8s can now penetrate the cat B frontally and the tank is overall a lot weaker frontally. However this does not mean that the cat B is weak overall as hold down speaking this tank still has the ricochet and the mantle is only going to be penetrated by the 2EX and tanks with 850 penetration. As you can see here, even with the 140mm, 45% chance to go through, not exactly something I want to do. Now, the Cat B does have a pretty different armor model than the XM-103. The XM-103 has far better side and turret armor. For instance, if we went over to the XM-103 over here, preview, much, much different. So it means the Cat B is generally speaking weaker armor overall than the XM1A3. Um, the XM1A3 does, however, also have better front armor as well. Um, for instance, if we were to go for the XM1A3 with the Cat B's gun, um, roughly a 95% chance to go through, and that middle plate as well. But the Cat B is also significantly taller, and this is where the XM1A3's armor starts to shine, is when it starts to become angled. In other places like that, and you can see the thing here basically. Now, other things the Cat B has over the XM1A3 is I believe it's better turret armor, and also the engine deck isn't as pronounced either. If we cycle over to our Cat B over here and do the same, as you can see, the Cat B has a much stronger turret facing. But there is that as well, and that engine deck is a lot thicker, but obviously the side armor. Now, this does mean in some cases that either tank is stronger either all, but overall speaking, a Cat B and an XM-103, different armor models. A Cat B is much better hull down and has a better protected engine deck, but the XM-103 has much better hull armor and, well, a much better overall hull armor shape, which means the XM-103 won't be penetrated by tier 8s most of the time. Um, and of course the XM-103 has that godly side armor as well. Now, the Cat B's uh, engine was changed as well. Um, for instance, the best engine is still the BA Systems Hybrid, but it is no longer the ridiculous Alte engine, essentially meaning that the Cat B was changed from moving like an Alte to moving like a significantly heavy tank with the same engine as the Alte, to clear that up. Um, what else was changed about the Cat B? Let's have a look online just to make sure that we can check everything out here. Go 
because I remember doing that. I believe it was maintenance to be a December. No, it was not. Uh, the cat B was changed. So the upper frontal plate was reduced by 120, 100, 20 millimeter. Um, it's smoke grenades were changed from 10 to 30 seconds and 90 seconds and the magazine reload time was increased as well. Less thick armor penetration bonuses which means the cat B won't be hitting people for 2000 damage unless in exceptional circumstances or with Cortez and it is roughly 10% slower and 20% less agile. So basically what I covered. Now um, the tank's gun was inaccurate before and it still hits like a BL-10. Now keep in mind there is still the usual amount of commanders to go through so we'll go for them very quickly. Um, generally speaking the best commander in my opinion for the um, Cat B as well as most tanks is Vincent. Um, better accuracy, less chance of being set on fire, more hit points and some nice reload speed buffs as well, but if you want to go for the usually American tank playstyle, um, there is the choice of Douglas. Now, now Douglas usually helps for base agility, that's what his quick dash does, and stoppable fire giving you better reload time as well, but basically nukes your camo value and some nice hit points and stuff as well to begin with. Um, now obviously if you're going to be playing close combat all the time, you could choose Rachel, who gives you a hilarious um, reload speed, but that is only within 50 meters. So obviously you've got that to contend with. There is also the choice of using Victor slash Sabrina if you want to do module damage with it. Um, there's Ophelia if you want me to come over and to stab you with a rusty spoon. Um, there is always the Freya choice, but the Freya choice is more of a railgun and something quite meme -y. Um, and then lastly, there is Alexander Cortez for the Cat B, who basically gives you 100% chance of dealing max damage. Now, on a one-to-one -one shot basis, the Cat B can be inferior to an XM1A3. Um, the XM1A3 is 140. Um, is, to be honest, better than the Cat B. Um, 8.3 second reload time and massively better DPM. Um, so obviously if you're going for a single shot basis tank here, the XM1E3 is going to be better. In fact, the only thing the Cat B will have over the XM1 is the Cat B's double shot. But um, overall speaking, the Cat B is no longer invincible. Now we're going to quickly compare it to some tanks of the other tier. Let me just check I have the right ones. Of AP. Um, let's compare the Cat B to some other tier 10s. Uh, let's choose itself, the Alte, the Perk, Leopard. I'm not choosing the Challenger because, uh, frankly speaking, it's kind of useless. Um, Merc, Knighty, Armada, XO Money Free. So, across the board, as you can see here, the Cat B 880 damage is only slightly beaten out by the 490 and obviously all the other 150 slash big 140mm guns. Why is this not working? There we go. Actually, in fact, I'm going to do something better. I'm going to compare the Cat B to all the tanks which can kill it. So, this is, in my opinion, all the tanks that can kill a Cat B one-on-one. -on -one. Now, you may have noticed a pretty recent trend here. Um, all the tanks have significantly more DPM and better reload speeds. Um, the Challenger 2 is an exception, but we'll talk about that in just a few seconds. These are all the tanks that have the best chance of killing the Cat B simply because better DPM, better DPS. Now, they won't be able to challenge a Cat B if the Cat B is able to reload or retreat, but those tanks, if they keep pushing into a Cat B, they will win. The Cat B also has significantly less top speed, but the Cat B will be able to get out of there. That's basically it really. I mean, we've literally just went through a review of the Cat B, so anybody watching this probably knows what it is. Now, I was talking about the Challenger 1 for a second, the Challenger 2 at do for a second, and this is, this is quite special, but it is not really that special. It's just something that a lot of people forget when using the at do, is the at do's piss shells can 
and will go through the front of a cat bee if it's face hugging. And in fact, there have been in, uh, instances of a Challenger 2 being able to actually Amarak a cat bee through the front. So, cat bee drivers beware, especially if they're going in low rider mode. But going up against a Challenger 2 isn't exactly a great idea, especially if you're face hugging, because one piss shell from a Challenger 2 at do can change all the difference. Remember, there is that little spot there as well in the driver's hatch. So, anyway, um, the usual ones apply. Um, I prefer override simply for the 20 second duration. Now, you do have the option of using rapid fire, but I wouldn't really take it really. Um, surplus parts create first aid cabinet, fright sugar, should the usual, and improved barrel line and all gun breach. Was a reference Pioneer Toolkit and Ballistic Computer. Um, obviously, if you have improved drive, obviously to go through that one as well. But it's simply to make sure that you can get that gun to be as accurate as possible. Now, we're going to have a look at some games for the Cat B, so stay tuned, we'll see how it does. Right, we are on Coastal Threat, and I have managed to screw up a Discord message. Um, obviously, there's quite a few Cat Bs in that match, but not really as there usually is. Um, Unfortunately, the replay system was bought, so when I was doing the um, bounty hunt last week, um, most of my games were in the 8,000 damage range. I'm on my fourth. <laughs> Today, I've done like 4,000 damage in total. Um, it can be very random, especially with games. And tier 10 is pretty random be rushing and stuff but hopefully if we all stick together like a great big happily family we should be mostly fine um, now most of their MBTs are over there which means we should be able to simply rush down the side and then go for them now obviously if we can get hold out even better be down there at 6183. The question is can I Shoot there. 23 down there. Excellent double hit. Now, I believe if I was using the XM1A3, that VT5 wouldn't have been able to hit me. But, oh well. That's how it is, right? Charlie 2 down there, I imagine. Can't be over. Be over there, I'm either there. So hopefully we should be able to screw up this at do. If not, I do believe that cat B is gonna be smoke up very quickly. Ooh. And a great double shot into that cat B. Now as you can see there, when both shots hit, it is absolutely fantastic, and when they don't, it is for a keyboard at window time. Is that cat B? Okay, cat B is still over there. Charlie is there, so I'm going to see if I can go for him. Got a lot of hit points in play. Good hit on the VT5, he's done for. Let's see about going for this Charlie. It's still 11 11, which means our push has gone one way, their push has gone the other. Such is the nature of tier 10. That dude's over there. Good hit on him. He's dead, we're up to 5k already. I believe their cat B is over there. Okay, so he's currently still in the vicinity, so we should be able to go for him. Um, like all other cat Bs, in all likelihood, he is going to be using the uh, hybrid engine, which I am. I'm going to see if I can move off over here. The cat bees basically ate each other. They have five, we have three left. Not great, but one of them is out of position with the others. There he is. So one, really? One hit point? Interesting. Anyway, let me see if I can move down through the city to head him off. Um, I think 5,000 damage is a pretty decent game. It's a thousand more than Sorry, 500 more than my damage and hit points, so I'll take it. Just have to remember to keep my eye on that smoke because if I run into 
some of them. Um, generally speaking, the Cat B, it's not really a good horde control tank like other high DPM vehicles. Um, well, I, I should say unlike high DPM vehicles, um, it quite heavily relies on... Is there people down here? I don't think there are. Might be able to go for him actually. Fuck it. Let's go say hi. So two Cat B's over there. Let's see about going into them. Yeah, there we go. Good hit. Beautiful hit. Now, obviously, I'm going to have to watch my flank quite a bit. Because the chances of them coming up on me is quite high. But overall, beautiful shot into him. Obviously, he's going to be dead very soon. Um, and I believe they made a pretty big mistake. I'll take that one hit point. Oh shit, there's our other cat B. Okay, he's going places. Obviously he's down there. This Sphinx has been quite... Uh, well, if the Sphinx wants to take the hit, that's on him. To say he's got a bit of a, bit of a dash bush going on. Um, I was going to say, where have they gone? He's not down there, so he's probably run off. So, in all likelihood, a bunch of them have probably bunkered down on the south. Um, it's kind of a bit of a piss take that most of them, that they lost two cat bees, two full health cat bees. As you can see here, the 30 second smoke timer is actually really damn good. Moving around with everyone. I believe we have the, vant the advantage here. Uh, we've got a bigger MBT block than they do. Is he visible? He is not visible. Okay, well, we'll go over him next. The ones we need to go for are probably going to be bunkered down somewhere. But a great thing for me to do is to see if I can get up on the rear of this cat bee and shoot him in the back. Some there he is. There you go, two beautiful hits into him. 1800. MGM. Okay, so we know where the rest of them are. They're over there. Now, the chances of me taking a hit from them is quite high, but we're going to have to do it. Well, he's, he's, he's the only on 852, can't be over there. They should be able to get rid of him. Um, the best thing for me to do is to simply kill him. I've got two shots, either of which will kill him, and if not, I can just ram the fucker. Where is he? He's dead. Beautiful. Ooh, hi, Poland. Poland spotted. So I think the first thing that Poland's going to do is either going to run away or he's going to try and rush me. I believe running away. Okay, there's Namada. Where all the rest is. MGM's over there. Let's see if we can slap him some. Kind of wanting them to. Hopefully, if he backs out of the cover again, I could actually hit him. MGM's over there. Come on, come on, come on. I'm going to be able to spot him again. That's a bit of a missed opportunity on my part. And now I am very much out of position. However, we should have the advantage on them. At the very least, we have loads of MBTs. They do not. All our guys really have to do is just to wait. And I believe one of them is actually propped up over there. MGM's over there. Each of them running around. There's that cat B again. T4, Armada. 
a second reload time here. See if I can pop some of them, especially that MGM. If I can pop him, my god. Oh, hi, Amada. Okay, he's down. Let's see about going for the rest. Now, that T4 is on full health. So, he has quite a bit of hit points running around. However, we should be able to dunk a pair of heat rounds into him. Alright, let's see about doing this. There you go. Two beautiful heat rounds. Ooh. Backing up. Gotta save this guy from the clerk. Clerk's dead. It's just a pollen ball shooting now. So get rid of the pollen ball, then go for the MGM. The pollen ball has probably slunk off. But let's see if he. Do not right. And my smoke grenades are still reloading. I only have, but hopefully the next clip should be fully on. Now he's going to try and use his camo to the best of his ability, and in all likelihood he is probably. Actually, in fact, he could be over here. down there. So he's probably run off over there. So that's a misplay for me. My first gut instinct was him actually being over there. So a Poland ball and a MGM left. Um, I kind of want to load heat rounds but at the same time the chances of them penning on the move are a lot less greater to that of AP rounds. So, yeah. Um, just gotta figure out where they are now. So, they're not over there. The MGM has to be on a relatively flat surface to be able to do anything. So. I know! Yes, the all-consuming call of dinner there. But yeah, this is kind of the annoying thing. Obviously, if I had a diesel engine, I'd be able to go at much greater speeds with this. I wonder where these bastards are. Honestly, I hate this because no one's no one's no one's going to win when it's a draw. They're probably better off just attacking us or something. Oh, there's some infantry over there. Killed a sniper. So that's what was spotting me when I was moving up uh, through the city before. Might as well go and cap as well, force them to shoot us. In fact, I'm gonna load heat rounds now. Hopefully, nobody noticed that. Almost 30 seconds left on the cap. Now, hopefully, I should be able to double it out here. Um, 
one of the places they could go is through there. See if I can move myself in behind him. Thanks, dude. <laughs> we don't actually have enough time. Come on, Atdu. Come on. We could we could win if this Atdu comes in caps. Not gonna happen in it. Come on. God watching and that do is <sighs> Fucking knew the heat rounds won't work. Oh well. It happened. Like I said, should have loaded AP for that Poland ball, so there you go. And that's the Cat B, as you can see there, it basically killed everything. Well, most things. The double tap is still good, the armor still holds up. Obviously not against an MGM, um, but yeah. 11,000 damage done, 1 million credits earned, top of the team, blah 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 blah. Um, and what I was talking about, um, I did have a bad day today, but during the bounty hunt I had some amazing games as you can see there. 6,000, 8,000, 6,000, 6,000, 8,000, 7,000, you get the idea. So, yeah, it's still good, and it's still probably the best tier 10. And swarmed in numbers, it's not invincible, but in numbers this thing will basically kill everything. So that's it for the post nerf review, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all next time.